We are going to get started. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Romance Booth Chat from Cat Cat. Excuse me, from CamCat Books. My name is Jess. I'm the media coordinator at CamCat, and I'm so excited to bring to you three of our authors of these wonderful romance novels. We have with us today, we have Roma Cordon of Hi. Bewitching a Highlander. She's the author of Bewitching a Highlander. Lisa Williams Klein, author of Ladies' Day, and Haley Wenger, author of Managing the Matthews. And it's going to be such a lovely chat. We're very excited. Before we get into it, just a couple of housekeeping notes. This is going to be a 40 minute uh, little panel. So we ask that you guys please stay muted. And if you have any questions to go ahead and send them in the chat. And at the end, if we have time, I will get to them or just throughout the call, um, the authors might be responding to you in the chat if they see a question that's specifically for them. And let's get started. Let's keep that same order probably the whole time. So Roma, can you tell us about your book? Summarize your book for us. Yes. Um, hi, everybody. Um, my book, it, well, first of all, I'm Roma Cordon. Um, and my book is Bewitched in a Highlander. Um, it happens in 1747 in Scotland. Um, and my main character is Brina, a beautiful healer um, who's hiding the fact that she's a witch uh, because in 1747 they burn witches alive at the stake. Um, and so she is um, sets out to rescue her father who's missing um, and she's forced to face the truth about her past, her, her family's dark past. Um, and she falls for a debonair future chief, our hero, <laughs> um, when he saves her from a bad-tempered guard and he helps her on her rescue mission. And Egan um, is uh, um, itching for revenge against the Campbells. He disobeys his father to help Brina Alas, who he finds to be very enchanting, and he cannot keep his eyes or his lips off of her. <laughs> um, <laughs> and to save Brina from the uh, murderous Campbells, he will risk everything, including disobeying his father for the first time in his life and inciting a clan battle. <laughs> so that's a little bit about my book. <laughs> oh my goodness, very exciting. Yeah. Um, Lisa, tell us about Ladies' Day. Okay, um, I, I'm Lisa Williams Klein, and my book is Ladies' Day, um, and it's a contemporary story. And I did also want to say hi to the librarians. I, I wrote as a uh, young person's author for a while, and we love Library Journal, and we love librarians, so I just wanted to say hi to everyone. Um, this My book is a contemporary story, and I would say it's kind of in three three different themes. The first theme is a romance. It's a second chance romance for a woman who's in her mid fifties and she's had some sorrow and grief in her life. And um, she is on the golf course. She actually accidentally hits the guy in the rib with the golf ball and she thinks he's going to sue her, but he ends up asking her out. So it's a second chance for her. Um, she, it's also a family drama because her daughter, um, disappeared 15 years ago and she's been looking for her and has not been able to find her and um there's a possible possibility that there she may have a granddaughter she never knew that she had and then it's also so it's a, a family drama a second chance romance and also um a friend story because she has these friends that she plays golf with and that's kind of a comic um, thread that goes through the story because she and her friends are very relaxed. They say anything to each other and they're, um, they just have a lot of fun together. So I had a lot of fun writing this, writing this novel and, um, I hope people have a lot of fun reading it too. So I love the premise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank that you. That sounds very fun. And we're always big fans of female friendship. <laughs> well, I just love to about read about it. it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, I'm sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Haley, I want to hear about Managing the Matthews. Yeah, I'm Haley Wenger. Uh, my book is Managing the Matthews. It's a contemporary romance um, about a dual point of view about a Hollywood manager and then three famous brothers that she manages. She's been in love with one forever and she's been really good friends with another. Um, 
And so she starts off kind of heartbroken because the one that she's always had feelings for, he gets engaged to a fan out of the blue and it's like a PR nightmare. And also she's just heartbroken. Um, and then there's this opportunity for the three brothers she manages um, and her to be on a reality show about their lives. And they do so, there's some fake dating and then there's a friends to lovers arc. And it's just really fun exploration of like friends to lovers and, you know, falling in love with the person that's been there along all along that you haven't really seen. Um, and then also just like the dynamic of Hollywood and reality TV and, and how that affects everyone. Mm -hmm. That sounds very fun as well. It All does. three of these just <laughs> sound so interesting in different ways and like they'd be such great reads. Roma, tell us about Brina or, or tell us about both your protagonists. Um, so yeah, thank you for the question. Um, Brina, Brina misses her her parents because they've uh, they've basically disappeared for 19 years. Um, and she has this memory of a very warm, loving father and very ethereal uh, mother. Um, and as a healer, she she lives in a state of fear because she's a witch and she's um, paranoid that she'll be hunted down and burnt alive at the stake because that's what they do to witches in her time. Um, and she keeps a large because of that fear, she keeps a large part of herself, you know, hidden from even her friends, um, you know, and um, she just concentrates on doing her job, which is, you know, healing the sick and the wounded. Um, and when she goes in search of her missing father, she meet, meet, meets Egan. He's our hero. Um, he's a future uh, clan chief uh, for his clan, the Dunbars, um, and he catches her in a lie. And but she has to decide whether she wants to trust him or not. You know, the only problem is when she's near Egan and they're having a conversation or, or they're doing something to get together, her sanity goes out the window and all she has, you know, left with to make decisions is her heart. Um, so, yeah, that's a little bit about my main character. <laughs> That's so great. I just read this book recently, so I really enjoyed the strong female lead, and Brina was wonderful for that. Thank Lisa, you. tell us about your protagonists. Uh, okay, I will. I actually, it's a book in two voices, so I have two protagonists. One is Beth, and she is in her mid fifties, and she teaches English composition at a college near her, and she she sees her lost daughter and all of her students and she's really a soft touch as a teacher and in fact the other teachers are always giving her a hard time because she's always letting them turn in their papers late or you know or giving them a second chance and at the at times when other teachers are saying no you need to be harder on them but she's just a, a very much a soft touch um and she's a very loyal friend to her girlfriends that she plays golf with and she um but she also kind of has OCD about trying to find her daughter and looking for this granddaughter and to the point where other people sometimes get annoyed with her because she just gets so focused on it that she doesn't she doesn't want to give up. Um, and so, uh, you know, she she just is very, very focused on on these things. So I would say she's a soft touch um, and a little touch of OCD, but a really loyal, fun person. Um, and then my younger voice is Skye, and she's on the high school golf team. She grew up with her father um, without a mother, and she's also ha always had this dream that she will win a golf tournament and it will bring her mother back. And um, that that has just kind of driven her as a dream that this is going to going to happen. She has had a sort of a different background than some of the other girls on the golf team, but she manages to fit it fit in well. And she tries to stay to avoid the, you know, the drama of high school and stay focused on golf. And she's just a very level headed girl with, um, with her feet on the ground. And, um, she's, ju she's just a very heartwarming, solid girl. And I, um, I mean, I I love all my characters, and, and, I, and I I love Beth and Sky too, and I know that you all love your characters. So you just <laughs> you know, so anyway, those are those are my two main characters. Well, I love that you have this younger character who is such a level head on her shoulders, and and sounds very grounded, as you said, 
So I feel like that's always something I really appreciate when younger characters are being portrayed, that they're not caught up in the craziness of high school or the superficialness that they could be. So that's really wonderful. Yeah. Haley, tell us about your protagonists. Um, My main character is Kel. She um, is just really type A, just really dedicated to her job, but she kind of fell into it and then um, fame came really quickly for her clients. So she's she's feeling very overwhelmed, but she doesn't want to let on because she doesn't want to let them down. They were her friends and now they're her clients and there's all of this uh, like business side going on and she is just feeling really overwhelmed and kind of doubting like, is this what I want? Um, she's really close to her parents and she also is chronically ill with Crohn's disease, which is an aspect um, that I have and I wanted to put into a character but really just let it be like a small part of her life. Like she's sick, but she still falls in love. She still works hard at her job. She's, you know, has a full life outside of that, but also there's there's this one element. Um, and she is just really loyal to her friends and her clients, but she's just feeling really overwhelmed. And then um, Ash is the brother that she's been friends with since college. And he, is a rom-com star so he stars in like romantic comedies but he really wants to be taken more seriously he started to feel like he's just a piece of meat like he's just (laughs) like just stand here and look pretty um and he kind of wants to take like his art seriously um but he's finding that hard and then he's been secretly in love with kel this whole time so It sounds like an awesome book. Yeah. <laughs> I can't I can't wait for it to be out on Audible. I'm all about Audible yeah. these days. So um yeah. I have it on my to listen to list. Yeah. I just I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed both of your books very much. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know we have some really wonderful romance books on the Cam Cat uh list. Yeah. So. I love how they all are different types of romance and they're all different types of strong women but like in different ways yes and I love that your character has this disease that she's living with but it's such a small part of who she is as a character that's really really cool yeah yes so we've gotten to hear a little bit about your protagonists your love interests if you will um tell us about the big bads of your story Roma I want to hear all about Alistair Campbell (laughs) (laughs) um Alistair Campbell is as bad as they come um I without giving too much away um let's just say he's very um he his he directs his clan to murder a lot of Jacobite rebels. Um, he's a very hard man. He's very cruel. Um, he has no respect for women. Um, just very, um, you know, male uh, control kind of a, you know, person. Um, it, and actually when he's um, having discussions, like, cl- again, this is uh, Scotland 1747, so very different. <laughs> very different from today you know from um current times but so when he's dealing with clan business um he doesn't like women to be present um you know just very domineering um so i would say he he's a murderer he's a rapist um and my main character brina is scared of him um she's deadly scared but you know, she's very determined. She's very determined to find her lost father. And she goes head to head with him, even though she's very fearful that he might find out who she is and he might kill her, basically. Um, she's very determined and she's, she keeps her wits about her and she's very, um, you know, uh, strong-minded and she's very capable. So I would say... Um, you know, Alistair Campbell, while he's as bad as they come, you know, murderer, rapist, um, you know, just very terrible person. Um, I want to say that my main character is is up for the task of challenging him. And um, yeah. So anyway, that's a little bit about, about the bad guy. <laughs> well, he definitely sounds like a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Lisa, tell us about your antagonist. 
Well, I am thinking about it. I, I would say that Beth's ex-husband is somewhat of an antagonist because she wants to continue the search for the daughter and she wants to move forward with um, with finding out if this young girl is her granddaughter and he doesn't really want to pursue it. And um, so in a way, he is a bad guy, but he's not a really bad guy. He he grieved with her for many years. He just was ready in his life to move on to the future before she has been ready. Um, and so I would say, actually, Beth is her own worst enemy in my in my book. And if she if you would say, you know, who's the bad guy? It probably is her own self doubts and her own inability for a time to move from the past to the present and see a future. Um, so she's living in the past and her friends, her friends are trying to persuade her. Come on, you, you know, you have a chance, a second chance here. You need to move forward. And this is the story of, you know, can she? So I, so she's her own worst enemy, I guess. I like that. And I think that's even, you know, a nice thing to have a little bit of balance. You know, she's your protagonist, but she also is her own worst enemy. And yeah. and especially for this kind of thing where, you know, obviously in Roma's story, there's a clear antagonist, but mm -hmm. in yours, because it's very much like a, a story of just moving, coming together more so than, than falling apart, it makes sense that the antagonist is just the protagonist in her own way. Yeah, so that's really, really yeah. neat. Haley, I mean, I assume that it's a similar situation to Lisa and that there's no big bad here. But tell us about a character yeah. that you feel like is posing the biggest problem for your protagonists. Yeah, I think in this story, the biggest thing in Cal's way of getting what she wants is um, like the industry itself, the way it's set up. And um there are a few people that kind of embody that there's ryan the brother that she's been in love with and he's just kind of a big playboy he's just not great um and he kind of just strings her along for years um and takes advantage of that and then creates a lot of like problems for her as far as managing them and their careers and and how they're perceived in the public and then there's um, Judith, who is the agent for the boys, and she is trying to do a lot of underhanded things and kind of cut Kel out. And Kel is like, do I even want this anymore? Like, this is a lot. And so that's, I think, just embodied by different characters. But yeah. Oh, yeah. They, or the uh, industry can definitely be a really cutthroat thing. So it yeah. that, that would be pose such a big problem. <laughs> Um, so these are all obviously romance novels. So I want to hear about how you guys had your romance develop in the story. Obviously, you know, without giving too much away. Um, tell us about sort of this main central idea of your of your romance, Roma. Um, sure. Thank you for the question. Um, so I want to say the main idea, there are many sub sub uh, conflicts, but I want to say the main conflict is this idea of forbidden love. Um, so um, Egan is a highborn future laird of his clan. Um, again, 1747 Scotland, you know, they are, think Jacobite rebellion, think um, clans in the highlands of Scotland, you know. Um, in my story, the main clans that I, um, this story centers around it, it, uh, are the Campbells, the bad guys, the Dunbars, the good guys, and the McCrae's. Um, I want to say their clan have been affected by the cl the Highland clearances, which is basically um, around the time when the clan started to disperse from the Highlands. So, so, um, so Egan is the future clan chief for his his um, clan, and so he's a highborn. And Brina is a lowborn healer, and she's a, a closeted witch, if you will. Um, but, you know, their attraction for each other doesn't seem to care that they are oil and water and they shouldn't really mix. Um, Egan has always idolized his father, but he risks his father's wrath um, by helping Brina. Um, and the question is, you know, to 
will he be able to break the bonds of societal propriety and and help her and go against his father um and brina she has always dreamt of a husband of her own and family of her own because she lost her family her parents when she was very young um you know and having a husband and children is a very respectable endeavor but she falls in love with Egan, and because he's a highborn, the only way she can be with him is as his mistress. Um, so the question is, you know, will she um, have to, will she give up her dream of a family of her own and a husband of her own to be with the man she loves? So that's kind of the the main question, uh, you know, of, of the story. <laughs> sure, yeah. Well I mean, all three of your books sound like they have very layered central conflicts. There's the romance element and then also the external kind of societal element of yours. And it sounds like Haley's as well. And we'll get into that in a second. Um, but Lisa, tell us about you have, of course, your romance part of the story, but also this uh missing daughter slash mother situation between Beth and Sky. And tell us more about that. Yes. Um Yes, um, Beth has wanted to has has been looking for her daughter on and off for fifteen years without success, and she has conflicts with a lot of people because she has not wanted to try to move on, or she is just focused on this too much. So she she is still in love with her ex husband. Their marriage fell apart really because she couldn't stop looking for her daughter, and um, he was ready to move on. So, but he still you know she still is in love with him and but she has conflicts with him especially um when it comes time to try to investigate whether this granddaughter is really their granddaughter and he doesn't really he he's just doesn't want to do it and so she has conflicts with him she has conflicts with her friends who she they say oh you hit this guy on the golf course and he asks you out you should go out with him you should give him a chance and so she's having conflicts with her friends because they are getting impatient with her because she has these opportunities and they don't feel that she's taking them. So, and she, uh, she had big conflicts with her daughter with, when she left. Um, and she, her mother is also in the, in the picture and she has conflicts with her mother too. Um, so she kind of is in conflict with pretty much everyone in her family and, um, and with herself. So I would say the biggest conflict is actually with herself. And then um, she does go out with this guy. She's very nervous about it. But and I, I tried to make it as a funny date scene. You know, you love to see those funny date scenes. And I, I, I uh, had a lot of fun writing that that scene. Um, but she does go out with him. But he has he has some sorrow from his past. His wife passed away. His children really are not ready for him to move on and start seeing another woman. So they they have there are a lot of ob obstacles to the two of them getting together. So um so that's that I'll leave it at, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> oh and I forgot oh I forgot the romance that um there's a romance that Sky has the young girl has a has I almost forgot about that. Um and there's a young man who caddies for her when she's in tournaments and she thinks of him really as a friend and as a best friend, um, but he has other thoughts. He, he he thinks their relationship is is a lot different than that. So that's um, that's a romance there too. So sure. Well, I guess we'll have to actually read the book to find out if uh, Beth makes it to her second date with yeah. mysterious <laughs> false ball and ribs man. Right. <laughs> And Haley, tell us about the romantic conflict of your story. Yeah. Um, so to begin with, like I said, Kel is heartbroken over one brother. Um, and then there's an opportunity for a reality show. Um, and then they're kind of advised, like, in this reality show, like, romance is really selling and all the other brothers are coupled up. So Ash should, you know, be with someone. And he asks Kel let's fake date just for the show. Like, let's just let the cameras assume that we're together so they don't pair me up with anyone else. Um, and so that kind of leads to her starting to see him in a new light. And um, he takes advantage of, you know, we have to kiss or we have to hold hands. Um, 
and their friendship really just starts to develop into more. But then there's the conflict of, um, as I said earlier, she is starting to feel just disenchanted with her role and she wants to take a step back, but she knows that if she does that, um, it will change the dynamic of their friendship slash like burgeoning relationship. And so, um, yeah, that's just kind of in the way of like, we have this, but like, what's, what's best for each of our careers. Sure. And I'm sure to some extent, what's going to make for good TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of audiences who enjoy television, tell us about the audiences that you think would enjoy your book. What's your target audience here at Roma? Um, yeah, um, so the audience for Bewitchin a Highlander, I would have to say, is historical romance lovers, um, you know, um, readers who love um, authors like Eliza Knight, Mary Wine, Margaret Mallory, and uh, Monica McCarthy. Um, I think they will definitely find um, Bewitchin a Highlander is right up their alley. <laughs> Um, and also, I, I want to say that viewers of shows like Outlander and Poldark, um, I think they'll find Bewitched in a Highlander very entertaining. Um, there's also the fantasy aspect of Bewitched in a Highlander. So it's definitely a historical romance on one side, but there's a fantasy aspect of it. Um, so I want to say if you're into witchcraft and spells and things like divination, which is, you know, in Brina's time in, in uh, 1747 Scotland, it's considered having like a second sight, you know, if you're into things like that, then this is the book for you. Um, also, if you're just into a good old fashioned historical steamy romance, then uh, Bewitch and a Highlander checks the box. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Lisa, what would you say or who would you say are your target audience for your book? Yeah. Oh, I, I yeah, I do want to talk about it. I wanted to say to Roma that I, I was reminded of, of Poldark when I was reading your book. I and and I and I loved it and I I loved Poldark. So I just Thank you. Know. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. When you said Poldark, I just wanted to say yes, I that I agree with that. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so um, the um, I I suppose anybody who loves romance because there are two romances in my in my book for uh, like a more mature second chance romance or and there's young people a young person's view of romance so anyone who loves romance and it, it's family story a family drama and people who love to read about family drama I think would would love my book. Um, um, I, um, I wanted to read um, Kimmery Martin, an author um, that I admire, wrote a, um, a blurb for me. And I just wanted to read part of it because when you when you ask the question of who it will appeal to, she said, Lisa Klein's writing will appeal to fans of golf, certainly, but also to anyone who wants a heartwarming and thoroughly entertaining family drama. So I, I think if people like family drama and like family stories, because it's a, it's a, you know, it's a, about those things. So, um, so yes, romance, family drama. I, I love the premise, Lisa. And I also like the fact that you say it's a second chance romance. Um, I think for us more mature um, audiences, I think it's fantastic to read about those. So. <laughs> Yeah. Well, they're yeah. all more complicated. They're always more complicated. Because yes. Often have, often have children and yes. they may or may not be interested in their parent becoming romantically involved. And so it is, it, it, in a way, it's, it is complicated in many ways. So, yeah. Sure. I also appreciate the family drama aspect. Sometimes it's nicer to read about someone else's family drama than to experience <laughs> your own. So, yeah, that's, that's so true. Yes. It sounds very fun. <laughs> Haley, tell us about the audience that your book targets. Yeah, um, I think definitely if you're fans of reality TV and just trying to guess like what here was contrived and what here is like actually happening, what's, where's, what percentage is the reality? Um, I think you'll enjoy it because it's kind of like a peek behind the scenes. Um, and I think anyone who loves the friends to lovers trope, um, and people who just enjoy classic rom-com movies or books, it follows a lot of that, a lot of those beats, so. 
Absolutely. Well, I that's my guilty pleasure is a good, you know, <laughs> the bachelor, the bachelorette. <laughs> so I could definitely see anybody who loves any of those kinds of shows really being interested in something like that. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say I love sort of the behind the scenes part of the reality show that you had in the book. It was, it was just so entertaining. And, um, and it, it, you know, I was very interested in finding out. And I also, I was just, I was saying, Kel, can't you see this guy is so great. Like she was, <laughs> and I, I love to be in the midst of a book where you're kind of, trying to talk the character into doing what you think that they should do yeah. somehow seem blind to, you know, whatever, to whatever it seems right for them. And I was really rooting for Kel to, <laughs> you know, to, to see him in a new light. You know? Yeah. I, I, I think, I think anything that shows like behind the scenes of like reality TV, I think audience will love because they always want to know the real stuff. You know, they want to know what's behind, like what's really going on behind the camera. So I think that's really, really interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love the idea. Of, oh, sorry. Go Who for told it. them to say this? That's yeah, I mean. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, well, it's like you're yelling at your book the same way that you would yell at your TV screen when the character is doing something crazy that you think that it shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, so we talked a little bit about this in the last question, um, but you guys have dropped little hints to it throughout this chat. What message do you think um, that your readers will take away from your stories, Roma? Um, yeah, thank you for the question. Um, I think Bewitching a Highlander will have a very positive impact on readers because I want to really empower my readers um, with a strong heroine. Um, you know, um, uh, so, so the thing with writing a strong heroine, though, I feel like you have to tread a very thin line because you can a woman can uh, be strong minded, but she can come across as very ill tempered and, you know, kind of like a shrew um, as opposed to when you have a hero that's very strong minded. He come he comes across as very heroic and commanding and formidable. Um, so I feel it's a little bit of a double standard kind of. Um, so I try to show Brina's strengths, you know, she's, she's very capable, she's courageous, she's uh, determined, but I also try to um, emphasize her weaknesses as well, um, because, you know, she makes mistakes like the rest of us, and she's very uh, relatable. So I think the message of this book is that, you know, um, you can, I want readers to relate to her and to also see that they can overcome you know, obstacles in their lives, just like Brina did. So I feel the message is going to be a positive one. Absolutely. And Lisa, what would you say is the impact or message that your uh, audience will take away from your book? Well, I hope that people um, see the second chance romance as, you know, a really positive thing. And that, it I mean, it is a sort of a message that um, everybody has sorrow, everyone has grief, um, and we deserve to process it and we deserve to give it, you know, what it requires. But at, maybe at some point, everyone want, possibly wants a second chance at happiness and, and a second chance at repairing family relationships, which are so important. And I think, you know, it, many people have situations in which they would like to repair a relationship and this is this is a story of that being offered as a possibility to my characters and and it actually beth and sky have relationships that need repairing and so they're they're reaching for each other and reaching for the mysterious character who is the daughter um and and I think it's a good um, message for people to have hope that that these relationships can be repaired and people can have a second chance at love. So it's never too late. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. That's also yeah. very powerful. I mean, both of them. And Haley, I'm excited to hear your answer to this question as well. 
Um, yeah, so I think like on the romance aspect, um, the main message is maybe just like, um, like you need to be open to like possibilities of like who's been there all along. Like I think in Friends to Lovers, that's the beauty of that trope is that there's always someone or maybe both of them who feel like we're just friends. And then all of a sudden as things develop, they're able to be open to the possibility of like friendship is actually a great place to start because like we could be something more and it could be great. Um, and then just overall, um, like as far as their careers, I think there's a lot of message of if you're not happy with something, you don't have to settle for it. Like you can go out and find and change and do something new. You don't have to stay with a person or a career or a city that's not bringing you joy. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for all of your answers. And thank you to everyone for joining us. Once again, this was Roma Cordon, author of Bewitching a Highlander, Lisa Williams Klein, author of Ladies Day, and Haley Wanger, author of Managing the Matthews. All of these books are available in the links that were or, uh, on camcatbooks.com. And you can check them out as well on the links that were provided in the chat by Abigail. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in and enjoy the rest of your library journal's day of dialogue. <laughs>